at the top of the track, at the bottom of the track, against which all the other temperature runners, uh, runners' temperature must be measured. They can't be more than plus or minus two degrees from there to avoid people heating their runners for less friction. 26 sleds. Hiro Takahashi of Japan, the first man off, and track record holder Matt Antoine will go second of the 26 heats. Top 20 go through into heat two. Total time for both runs counts. And the least and elapsed time will decide our winner. We have got veterans. We have got down. raw rookies. It's a classic first season after Olympic Games. Lots of retirements and lots of young bloods coming in to try and establish themselves in the pecking order. Veteran Japanese slider and coach Hiro Takahashi. Uh, beg your pardon. Uh, Hiro Takahashi is a slider. Uh, his coach alongside him. Takahashi with the first start draw. Katsuhiro Koshi is the man holding the sled. And Hiro now into his second full Olympic cycle. He's such a long rangey athlete as well. And his coach. Kazuhiro Koshi is, is a legend in Japan. I had the opportunity to race in Nagano and to see how much the Japanese public loves him and adores him at the track there. It was such an honor. He competed in Nagano in 90, uh, I beg your pardon, he was uh, racing in Nagano. He competed in the Olympic Games in 2002, first time when it came to Olympic Games in Salt Lake. But as you say, he's a massive legend in Japanese sporting circles of any kind. Takahashi, he's going to start to find some form. This will be a fine time to do it. 5.05 is a decent start. The advantage of long levers, if you can roll oh. it, is very significant. That was turn 12 in a nutshell. If you don't get onto that turn early, you have no shot at grabbing the very subtle, finicky pressure in there, and you fly off the end. So it fly off 12. There's the finish line just before the final part of the heart. And a 55-22 track record is 53-41, so we're a long way from that. How close Matt Antoine will get to his track record. Always well, well spoken, polite young man. Grab his autograph at the end of the night. Also, no Watch for head man. position. You want to see their chin as low as pos like possible. If their head is up, he went in late there. <laughs> There's a reason his head was up, because he was anticipating this. A big hit, shoulders, the rest of the body, of course, follows. You talked about raw rookies. There's going to be some raw shoulders on a lot of these raw rookies here today. Well, here is Matt Antoine, the track record holder, and a man still feeling the relaxed glow of a job well done in Sochi. Another really tall, rangy athlete that's great for aerodynamic flow over the body. It does mean you have to control the sled to benefit from it. You can see all his teammates there yelling their encouragement. 5.02 start, that's a good start for Matt. And this is great. One of the things to watch for with Matt Antoine is watch Extremely confidence talented. steer a sled. This is his home track. He's had more runs here than anyone else in this field. And he just can lay there and feel it and flow with it. Born and bred in Prairie du Chien, Wisconsin. Still lives there in the offseason. He is having a great run. Look at this. That's the way not to get nudged off flying by the wall and to set up the chicane perfectly. One, nine, oh. ten, nearly ten kilometers an hour quicker. And this is recruiting at work. This is why people watch the Olympics and think I can do that because we're watching Matt Antoine make this look so easy. 53-84. Boom. Boom. It's a down time. Tough field. 53-84, only four tenths away from the all-time track record. Is this Matt Antoine rebooting? Is this version 2.0? Matt Antoine 2.0, I will tell you, he is in rare form. I've never seen him like this. So happy, so relaxed. I mean, they say a medal won't make your life. Watch him go through the chicane. This guy is happy and having the time of his life. I even got the chance to karaoke with Matt this summer. I wonder where carrying was leading. That was, that was safe enough. 
Now then, if you go to the FIBT website, you will see the personality of Raphael Meyer coming through loud and clear. He is one of the real live wires in a field of live wires. Well, the young Austrian is such an explosive character. What's he got at the start? 5 This is his second and third World Cup stop here in Lake Placid. It's always fun to see the characters that this sport attracts. Like we were talking about, most people see it in the Olympics and they choose, they pick skeleton, they seek it out, they want to see what that feels like and it makes for just a great brand of crazy. Well, my time to watch the Salt Lake Games, watch skeleton and went, that's for me. Raphael Meyer was at a sports high school from the age of six. He was a ski jumper. And his mum, I gather, was very happy that he went to skeleton being marginally less dangerous. I've uh, found myself in arguments with ski jumpers before over who was crazier. They said, you do skeleton, you're crazy. Can you jump off a cliff? Yeah. And look at this, eight tenths behind, but he's in second spot at the moment. 54-65. I have a feeling Matt Antoine is going to take a lot of catching here. Thomas Dukers, Dominic and Christopher. Thomas representing Team Latvia. Well, the body language, I think, tells you what he feels about that run. That is going late into 17. When you see a sled shoot up to the lip, the top of the curve, that means they entered late and they caught all that G-force at once. He's gonna rise up again and then just get on a little bit early into curve 18. Uh, walks away, he's gonna leave that run where it lies. Next up, the first of our two Ducours brothers. Thomas, runner up in last year's World Cup rankings. Brother Martins was the man who took the Crystal Globe at the end of the season. That was his third consecutive World Cup overall win. And the two of them worked so well together, just pushing each other along. Very quick correction there out of the grooves. Four, nine, six, start. You can it's, always it's, expect it's, you never know coming out of the grooves in the skeleton which way it's going to kick you. So everyone you'll see lined up at the beginning of a race to see which way the grooves are feeding. Now this is going to be the sled to watch. He and Matt Antoine were back and forth all last year. This is what's going to show us where Matt Antoine's run lies. Ooh, Gabby's coming right down. He needs to be perfect from here on down. Bit of a skid. Oh, oh, lose it done. Just a tiny skid. Matt on 12, wow. 19 3. That could help him, though. That was a great chicane. This will be down to a couple of hundreds, perhaps. Will he be in the green at the line? He's not. Five hundreds back. We got a race on our hands. Well, again, Thomas Ducours. Reshaft with a couple of things he'll want to tidy up for the second heat. And that's a great feeling. When you go into that second heat knowing, okay, I've got time here, I've got time here, that puts you in a great mental place wanting to just jump people. He was talking about that little skid just before he came to the chicane. And it's funny because what looks so minute to us, that shows the level that he's at when he is working with those tiny little corrections. Didn't have the speed of Matt Antoine, which is a reflection of home track Touch and Matt track. knowing this track. Next up, Dom Parsons. Dom the Wizard Parsons. Hi to Jack Thomas watching back home in Europe. 13th place in last year's World Cup standings. But Dom had a big result here yeah! in Calgary last year on the podium. Oh no, oh, he had a little bit of a tough load. Five, five flat starts, that's a good start. He's known for his starts. The problem is he kicked right out of the groove. It is really hard when you are running downhill over speed to have a controlled load. Wait, that's what an ice house is for. You work on that all summer long. Well, from being in front with the start, the split is now nearly three tenths back. Already 4,300s. High line through Shady. Trying to carry the speed off the exit. And just forcing things a little bit here. 
116, 119 is the top speed. It's not going to put him in a podium spot here in Lake Placid, that's for sure. And another hit before the wall just to add insult to injury. 54 9 0. You'll want to jump spots, but he's definitely looking towards Calgary already. So much of this is about the flow, is about the rhythm, and when you lose it in the beginning, so hard to get back in front mentally. It's a great shot of what an explosive starter he is, but there needs to be kind of a shoulders first, and then there's that, that moment there where I don't know what happened and what he was adjusting, but he, rela so he again, relaxes back he down really here. abrupt. Just adjusting his position to the final position as he got bumped out of the groove right. at the end, and he wasn't settled, or he would have absorbed that a little better. Matt Antoine of the USA leads the first of our two heats, five of 26 athletes down. Christopher Grothair of Germany, one of the occasional performers in last year's World Cup for the German team. Like Alex Jung, former junior world champion in men's skeleton. The youngsters have a habit of sweeping all before them in the lower echelons. They need to carry that on into this top draw sliding. It seems to be a requirement in German sliding sports. He took that usual left hit, but then hit right before four, and that set him off pace for the rhythm of Devil's Highway. He's just a little bit behind the pace as he comes to shoot the two. Six tenths back, he needs good speed here. 119 is top speed. He's having a really clean run, but in the red, 8,300's back. The problem maybe with starting in luge is you know so much, you know what the perfect line feels like, and he, you could end up working too hard to get there, which as we know is only gonna slow you down in sliding sports. Here is Helmet, Chimpy scraping on the ice. 55-07. Well, that leaves him in fifth place at the moment with 21, uh, 20 sleds still to come, but he's one and a quarter seconds off the leader. Six athletes will not get a second slide. Only the fast 20 goes through into heat two. There are lots more rookies behind. Now dropping into the Devil's Highway and you can see his head bouncing. That is such an odd transition there. You're coming from what feels like sky high onto a flat and then back up onto a corner corner because those five and six are actually flat. Ostius Matthias Guggenberger struggled in the last two seasons with a lot of back injuries. And I promised him I wouldn't mention anything else other than, <laughs> other than that. And we're hoping that that is all behind him. He certainly looks as healthy as I've seen him in a very long while. And the start time is going to be the indicator. Okay. Five, zero, six is not a bad getaway. Coming in the curve. And the problem one. is when you keep tweaking your back is you can't be relaxed on the sled. It's always there, always niggling. And that's been his real bugbear. And then that is in your head as you're going down. I mean, every turn, if something is hurting, that's just subtle distractions that are keeping you from relaxing. Your body overrides your brain trying to protect the spine. And that's the problem is that no matter what it is that you want to do, your body's reflexes take over and tense you up. Right, as your body's reflexes should rightfully think, this is a bad idea, this hurts. 116.6, good speed in the chicane. Oh, really late in the 17 there, though. Half a second back, and the gap is growing to the leaders. But it is eight tenths, first to third. He goes fourth, a tenth of a second behind teammate Raphael Meyer. That means that Matt Antoine and Thomas Ducours, separated by just five hundredths, are a long step in front of the Austrians who lie third and fourth. And we're going to see huge opportunity for all these new athletes to try and fill in that gap there, that 81 hundredths. This is a great shot of sled, Mateus, choosing a side to push the sled. You'll notice people either pushing on the left side, right side, left groove, right groove, and that's all in how they want to enter turn one. 
how you put the weight on the sled, where you want your hand on the handle, how you transfer, all of that is so That's vital. The jack, the jack Anton Batuev of Russia again, an occasional performer for the national team in the last couple of World Cup seasons. He's their lead slider on Europa Cup, at least in terms of former results, because the Olympic champion remains back in Europe, still racing, still competing, just not at World Cup level. Don't expect Alexander Chetikov to appear slow. That is not happening. Back to F5, 14 getaway, respectable, but not going to worry anybody in the high speed stakes in the start area. And he's looking really good here, very relaxed, going into turn four a bit late. That could set him off rhythm, sends him late into the rest of the Devil's Highway. Into Shady 2. 3300s back. Oh, that was a visible steer. You saw how hard he was working to come off turn 12. From 7th to 5th to 3rd spot. Good speed. 3rd quickest through the chicane. And is he going to be in 3rd place in the line? That's a good run from Anton Batuev. He's in front of the two Austrians. Again, Matt Antoine, Thomas Ducours are a league away, six tenths clear, and only 500s between them. That's what happens when you have a clean top of the track, and then it gives you a better shot at buffering the mistakes down low. And you don't spend half the corners going, damn it. <laughs> damn it. <laughs> then you get to stay in the moment, as is so critical. Left shoulder using his left shoulder is up. He is really wanting to let the sled on to 12. Because if you let it on, you have a better shot at getting off. Touch to clear the track. The track yeah. is now clear from the finish. You start number taking one. Off, you start taking off his heart. It's the landings that are really hard. Well, here's our World Cup champion for the last three seasons. The man who's been almost undefeated in World Cup and World Championship races up until the Huge rise of Alexander Tretyakov, our reigning world and Olympic champion from Russia. Martin Stukors twice has gone to the games now as and twice has come away with a silver medal, but 486, you wouldn't know it. That's what makes him so unstoppable. And I bet, I would wager he was a bit disappointed not to see Trechikov here after losing him to, losing to him in the Olympics. Yeah. yeah, no question. Well, if he's got a chip on either shoulder from two world champ uh, from two Olympic silver medals, then he's going to be as well balanced as he ever was. But he's got this ability to leave everything trailing in his wake, including his rivals. He's bleeding time a little bit. Yes, he is. We, oh, we've got a long track here. We might see Antoine hold his spot. Faster than Antoine. 119.4 to 119.3. We could be down into single digits. We could have a tie for the lead. Oh, and in front, 53.74. Martins Ducours is back at his imperious best. That then, also shows the experience though of Matt Antoine because of outpushing Matt by over a tenth. Typically we say that multiplies by three at the bottom. So that's an indicator of how well Matt Antoine drove. Absolutely right. Take nothing away from Matt Antoine. Wow. The ability to stay straight despite nicking that wall there. Really impressive. It's not that he doesn't take hits, it's just that they don't distract him. <laughs> they don't take him. <laughs> Good call. Kyle Tress, 10th of our 26 athletes. Kyle Tress, one of the younger men coming up through the US ranks. Now with the retirement of John Daly. He is number two with Matt Antoine, currently lying in second spot. Can he get in among the medals here in the only US race of the season? 508. Kyle's a great example of figuring out how to push a sled. He may not have the fastest 30 meter start time, but he has figured out, oh, he's going late in the three there. It's gonna cut some ice, but he has figured out how to accelerate the sled at the start. It's not always about how fast you get between those timing eyes, it's how much momentum gets into the sled as well, so the speed tells us things. 
Powell's another athlete that started in 2000, after the 2002 Olympics, saw it on TV. We were both in the same sliding school together way back in the day. Great run through the chicane, and that puts him nicely online into the heart. Good speed, fourth place at the line. That's a good run from Kyle Dress. USA second and fourth, Latvia first and third. High fives. Band of brothers, Antoine and Tress versus Martins and Thomas Ducours. And that is where your medals are gonna come from at the moment. Anton Batuev of Russia in fifth. Uh, gotta love seeing that straight through the chicane, home track advantage. Kyle loves sliding. Yes, he does. This is, that's, I mean, that's one of the things that makes him good is you can just tell how much he loves the sport. And he's a very <laughs> analytical slider as well. A real whiz kid. So, Martin Stukors leads from Matt Antoine and Thomas Stukors. Kyle Tress in fourth place. Ten of our 26 sleds safely down. So, two-minute warning to Killian. Two minutes. Once again, if you're... Out and about in Lake Placid this year, this weekend. Well, listen, the Olympic don't forget, if you are watching us now, you have Olympic the chance to watch every heat of every oh, race, no, World Boston Cup and weekend. World Championships this right season on YouTube, Bob Slay and Skeleton TV. Download the Infotel app and you can Check take it on the go with you as well. Stream it in HD onto your TV from your iOS device or Android device, phone, pad, and don't forget, you can follow us on Facebook, me at Martin Haven, at Bree Schaff, and when I remember what the password is, at FIBT announcer as well. I'll start tweeting from that as well. So if you have questions, thoughts, or just sarcastic comments, those are very <laughs> welcome. Join us all season long. We'll be bringing you every heat live in full HD. You will miss not one second of coverage. So if you're watching now, and you're enjoying it for the first time. Glad to have you with us for the ride. You'll find all the schedules online. If you missed stuff, you can watch it again on demand at any time. This year's races, last year's races, they're all posted up there. So there is no escape. And if you're enjoying it, tell your friends. And if you're not, tell me. We'll try and make sure you do next time round. We'll bring cookies, I promise. Suggestion box is online. Absolutely. At Bree Schaff, at Martin Haven. <laughs> just drop us a line and, uh, oh, yes, okay. <laughs> and the Wi-Fi just died, so <laughs> that might be a little tough. Let's touch to clear the track. The track is now clear from the finish to start number one. And start one for Killian. <laughs> Lake Placid, heat one of the season, men's skeleton FIBT Wiesman World Cup. And a new young name to country with, Killian von Schleinitz. Now, he's not the only ice sliding von Schleinitz from Bavaria because his brother is in the German Luge team. And he was on this ice last week and is currently in Calgary where Killian will be sliding next week. How do you like them, potatoes? Incredible what a feeder program they have in Germany. You start in luge and then say you're huge and you can't hack it, you go to bobsled, or you're a little bit kooky, you go to skeleton. Well, listen, we've got the Dukos brothers both sliding here. We've got the von Schleinitz brothers in different sports, but both sliding at the top level for Germany. So there's some happy mums and dads producing their own national squads. Especially because of how much they prize sliding sports in Germany. What a difference in a race in the States, in North America, as compared to a German race when they've got the Oompa band there. And such a huge crowd. Oh, re hit the take on. That really slowed him down into 18. Still a top 10 slide on his World Cup debut. That is a very good run. His brother was mighty impressive. I watched, called the race in Eels, Austria a couple of weeks back. And his brother making again his World Cup debut. Very impressive. And young Killian, yeah, no kidding. They breed them tough in Bavaria. Give me down 
And this just a little bit high on the end. And wow, that almost rolled him going into 18. Now that's a trouble spot for bobsled. It's rare that we see something that rough and skeleton there. I'm gonna guess at his age, 12, 14. <laughs> no, I guarantee he's late teens. Sung Bin Young for Korea. Now we've seen the Korean bobsleigh program growing, but you can't just have bobsleigh. You've got to have skeleton for the home games. And this kid's got great leg turnover. Look at that. Wow. 4.87 only. Martin's, uh, Martin's two course has gone quicker. This was someone that I had picked as a dark horse in Sochi. There was a few training runs that he won there. And how exciting for Korea going into a home Olympics to have someone that just comes out. I mean, in his first year of sliding, he was in the mix. Oh, he is in the mix here. If wow. you are eight hundredths off Martin Stukos, you are not doing much wrong. What a run. 1,200s, he's in, looking like a professional going through the chicane there. So you, you would not be able to tell how little sliding experience he has. You put a Latvian helmet on him, I feel right. convinced he's a Dukor's brother. Are we sure? Yeah, no kidding, look at the coaches. Look at that run, 54 seconds flat. And the control, I've not seen this guy slide before. And that is mighty impressive. His speed, I mean, you look at his quads. Look at the size of this man. And that mass, that Iron Man helmet. Right. <laughs> yeah. We're going to see a lot of him. Wow. So much fun to watch. So coming out of Benham's Ben, like you said, Looking Latvian, so composed, so controlled. Speed 118.3 up there, top six speed. Fourth place, is he gonna take a medal on his World Cup debut? Stranger things have happened at sea. Alexander Mutovin, again, occasional World Cup outings in the last couple of seasons for Russia. And they tend to, as this year, send a couple of athletes to the short part of the season, and then the main guys come in for the longer part of the season, depending on what their program is. This year, of course, aiming towards the World Championships and to peak there in late February, early March in Winterberg. But for Mutovin, again, a chance to put down a marker. This might be the B team, but like you said, this is also their chance to show what they've got and maybe try and stick around on the World Cup Tour. Yep. If you make a birth for yourself and a 498 start is a good way of going about it. It is. You know, you earn more points in World Cup by a long margin than you do in the other tiers of sliding. Uh-oh. That's, oh, really high and in a five, totally offsetting the rhythm of the Devil's Highway. Fourth fastest at the start. Already 4,500s back. Uh-oh. Firmly in the top 10. Just having a bit of a rocker run here. And any time he's not going straight, that's just he's being uptight on the sled and there's input going in. He doesn't mean any movement steers a skeleton sled. Not gonna catch the leaders. Is he gonna be in the top 10? Ducks his head to the line. See, thinking all the way, every centimeter, tucked his head for that hundredth of a second. He was really fighting some G-force on the end of 19. He's lucky he didn't smash that wall. He was just letting it fly. At that stage, it was not about not getting hurt. It was about finding those hundreds. Ninth place run, it's a good start. What a beautiful shot of Shady, too. He's taking the high line right over the Lake Placid, nice and round, but he drops out too early and comes out and nails the right wall, and that's going to make it hard to get on to turn 12. There he is, Alexander Matovin. Flies ninth. And our second Japanese slider, Yuki Sasahara. Starting to get really quite experienced now on these North American and European tracks. I'm sure the Japanese would dearly love to see World Cup racing coming back to their home track at Nagano. For those of you who have been following the newspaper stories over what might, might not, who knows where the rumors started happen. 
with Korea and Japan conceivably sharing some Olympic venues. Could you imagine banking on a home track advantage suddenly to find out that you're handing it to someone else at your home Olympics? Ooh. Yeah. I can't imagine the Korean Olympic organizers being overly thrilled with that concept. He's going late in the shady. High line, he's going to catch a little bit of pressure on the end there, still stuck to the left wall. Uh-oh. And we see that weightlessness in 12 because it's a very finicky pressure spot. If you don't catch it exactly right, it's, you're just going to fly up on the end. Skated over the rise through the chicane, robbing him of more speed. 13th at the start, 11th at the bottom. So ahead of junior world champion Christopher Grote here and Kilian von Schleinitz. So two Germans between the two Japanese sliders, Yuki Sasahara, the better of the pair at the moment, Hiro Takahashi, 14th place at the tail of the field. Now bearing in mind, we're going to cut six athletes before we get into heat two. He's got three behind him at the moment, should be safe. Happy 99th birthday, Grandpa. I'll echo that. Dave Krasheshen of Canada. Well, again, broke into the World Cup at the end of last year, Grizz. Caught out with him in San Moritz. He hadn't slid in the World Cup at that stage. So, hey, how do you say your name? He said, however you like. <laughs> so it happens Everyone's when got a different take. When your name is a pile of, uh, <laughs> of consonants. Yeah. It's a triple letter school that's a winner in Scrabble. Dave Grichesian of Canada. <laughs> 5.15 getaway, and he is an absolute bear of a man. He could easily be a bobsledder. And a lot of times that could make it hard in skeleton, but you are your aerodynamic form. You are your sled. You're gonna go fastest if you can become one with your sled. The problem with being a bigger athlete is that's not quite as aerodynamic as the tinier bullets. Well, the other advantage you have is you stretch out the weight over a longer wheelbase, if you like. So those levers at the back, you have to move less dramatically to make the steers. You know, think of the, the, the you know the tall athletes. You're talking about the Gregor Staley's right. and the Ducours, and it allows you to, to keep stability. Right, ninth place. This is a good run. This is a Chris. good run. And at the okay. line, he's in eighth. That is a really solid run from Dave Grzechen of Canada. Canada, nice of course. Sliding, my man. Yeah, being the, the nation gets the second most time on the American tracks. Still having to paddle uphill. <laughs> yeah, Chris, that's a good run. Happy 99th, Grandpa. Love you. Well, I don't know who to congratulate more, <laughs> Grandpa for his 99th birthday or Grizz for a top nine run. I think both equal. This way. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's, uh, that's called sled check. What we don't see that often is, uh, is the jury members pulling athletes aside to check their equipment. John Farrow of Australia still coming back from a horrendous leg injury in sprint training a couple of years ago. Heath Spence, the Aussie bobsleigh driver, helping with the sled there at the top. He's four running here this weekend. Farrow still not fast at the start, but he's had some good practice slides. He has, and I mean, that kind of an injury, 5.32 start, that's going to take such a long time to come back and get your explosive speed. Well, he at least is no longer wearing the leg brace that he was right. sliding in last year. I mean, you know, you think these guys work hard for their living? You don't see the half of it. And as we talked about before, sliding in pain, I mean, it's so important already to stay relaxed on a sled. And if you're in pain, it's it just makes it that much harder. Southern Cross on his helmet is leading him down the track, but he's got a lot of skids going on. Yeah, we're seeing it a bit squirrely. He might have chose, chosen a more risky setup here, going really late in the 17. Good speed, 117.2. Same as Anton Batwev, who lies in sixth position, but wow. he's 16th. What does he get at the bottom? Not enough, I'm afraid. John Farrow in 16th spot, and that leaves him in danger at the moment. 
Remember, 20 only of our 26 athletes go through in a heat two. <laughs> Coming through the chicane, reaching a toe out. The, that rudder, that long lever can help keep you off the wall. So he goes into the Weybridge and at the top of the track, another German, another junior world champion. Of course, I don't think, <laughs> I think unless you have, haven't ticked that box, you never get a chance. But Alex Junk makes his World Cup debut here in Lake Placid, which is the European equivalent of a North American making their World Cup debut at somewhere like Altenburg. Right. Rough, tough, and bad to know. And they come here knowing that they're going to take hits. You wear, if you're smart, you wear padding and training on your shoulders just to get you ready. It's not aerodynamic, but at least it keeps you a little healthier for race day. Big start, 4.98. Wow. Fourth fastest starter. Quarter second back. Still in the top five. His lines are looking good. The question is, can he stay relaxed and maintain that speed? Look at the four. Heels together. You can see the sliding experience. The composure that it takes to maintain form while you're getting rocked around a track. 117-1. He's in the top three or four in terms of pace. We could see him jump into the top seven here. Yeah, he's come from six back up to fifth spot and wow. seventh place just slips a little at the line. 54-56 run for seventh place, Alex Young. Well, as you said, by the time they get here, they are pretty much fully formed, the German rookies, aren't they? And they've heard the tales of Lake Placid and wow, did he handle that well. Yes, he did. You don't want it to hurt? Stay away from the wall. <laughs> Total of 26. Curve 19 the there. That buries your face. There's a lot of G-force in the black wall is an indicator of how many hits people are taking there. He had a skin and a rub down the wall, and that might have dropped him one or two spots even in that last camera shot. Top of the ice now for head first Ed Smith. The track is now clear from the finish. Ed, the bulldozer. I'm, I'm not sure if these are official nicknames or if Jack Thomas is just feeding me them for home <laughs> to see if I'll repeat them on air. <laughs> well, that's a fun test. Yes, it is. Ed, a man who raises his own funding to help himself exist on the road as well. We're all proud wearers of the T-shirt. Great to see him back in the World Cup squad again. And like Don Parsons chose the same groove with the same result, got bounced out of the groove. Yeah, that groove is kicking right. And you don't want to be working so hard to keep it straight, but you also at the same time don't want to switch grooves on race day. Fifteen fastest starts, 17th place at the moment. It's looking pretty smooth here needs to find the form, had a really trying season last year and a, a nice, comfortable result just to get the season underway would really help. 17th place, rattles as she can. Speeds are coming up, 117 as well. And it's it's almost like he's just having too comfortable run. The run is looking good, the speed just isn't there. 14th place, that's a little better. The bottom half certainly better than the top half. Started 15th fastest, finished 14th place. Well, he's ahead of Christopher Grote here, former junior world champion. And he's 1500s behind teammate Don Parsons with only Yuki Sasahara between them. That is such a tough load. That's something that you rep out Hold on, Bear, that's a little in a start house, but what you can't account for is when the groove does something like this on race day, you don't want to be dropping a toe already before you've even gone into the first curve of a track, but it's almost like that spot takes an anchor right now. Yeah, that is bumping everybody out. Now, another World Cup rookie. Again, starting to lose count, Barrett Martineau. Another man with a grizzly bear on the helmet. Let's see if he can roar like the logo. 517, just 100 slower than Ed Smith of Great Britain, who we just saw. A little bit of a runner drop that sent him late into three. This 
spot of the track is one of the more important sections to really relax and go with it. If you can melt into your sled, the track is built to feed you. It naturally wants to keep you in. People talk a lot about, oh, can't you fly out? No, if you can stop fighting and go with it, the track is gonna help you. John Montgomery, the Olympic champion, had this theory that actually if you put a body-sized sack of potatoes on the sled, it would be a close call as to whether an athlete or the sack of potatoes was quicker. Right. So then it just becomes a mind over terrified matter. There you go. He said, maybe we're just overthinking the whole thing. 55-26, 18th place, ahead of John Farrow of Australia for Barrett Martineau, our rookie from Canada. Again, only a World Cup rookie knows these North American tracks from racing in the North America's Cup um, and the Intercontinental Cup. Carrying the sled like a handbag, <laughs> like it weighs nothing. These sleds are actually quite heavy and very awkward to carry. Next weekend, home to Calgary, Alberta. Another great looking helmet for Korea's Han Sin Lee. We just saw an absolutely outstanding performance from his teammate, Sung Bin Yun. Let's see what Hansen Lee can produce. These guys have been keeping their powder dry racing in North America. This is home territory from them. It is. This is the closest track until they have their home track built. This is where they spend most of their time. And it's a good, you're going to learn to take hits if you sit at Lake Placid. Well, they race in North America. So you've got Placid, Vancouver, you've got Salt Lake and Calgary. None are exactly gimme tracks, are they? They're all hard workers tracks. Love seeing the ice spray on that last step. Good start from him as well, 5-0-6. Five, zero, six. Just as important as firing the sled off the block is that last step as you load the sled. That's what's going to help just give you that extra push of velocity. But down in the zeros here, you're a world-class starter. If you're down in the fours like his teammate, you are absolutely flat. Taking the high line through Shady. Really great exit. Riding it wild. He set it up for speed and hoping to handle it. And it's not producing the speed. 113. Maybe the slowest sled is the slowest sled we've seen through the chicane. By his ninth fastest starter, he is 20th. He is the slowest by. Two tenths of a second at the moment. Another slider on a Bromley sled. Oh, yeah. Tough to see that number because we've still got more to come. Chances are he's going to get booted. Well, his start was very good. So not only is it about powering it off the block, but just as important as you come over the crest, you have to accelerate your steps even more and get that really hard push last step. The track is now clear from the finish to start number one. Start one for under Maribel. Overloaded at the start. Martin Stukors, Matt Antoine, Thomas Stukors, and Korea's Sun Yun Young are the top four here. 20 sliders down, everybody now battling for a place in the field. Barcelona's Ander Mirandel is next up. Spaniard, after more surgery during the summer, this time from a mountain bike crash. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's the thing is when you're when you're prone to being a risk taker, oftentimes a lot of athletes get hurt doing other things, like Katie Ulander, for example. Always getting hurt testing gravity. Yeah. Snowmobile crash that uh, put her career on the back burner for several years. She's coming back from injury as well. Rambel in the wall, 20th at the start, 18th place. He's going to use his experience and make it pay here. There's a lot of rookies in the field. Oh, no. Uh, that sideways skid is like putting it on the brakes. It's flat there, and you're actually going uphill through the chicane. Should still be in front of Hansen Lee of Korea, but he is not. He oh, slips no. behind by two hundredths of a second. He is out of the second heat, and he'll be disappointed with that one big slide. Robbed him of the speed he needed. Great looking new speed suit he's got this season. It is. And the Olympic helmet with lots of 
sponsor signatures on it. He's carried that through to this year. But the chicane is what did for him finally here in this first and for him only run. And once you take that first hit, it's <laughs> chances are you're going to panic. And that's where it's even more important to just really relax and try and wish the sled straight. Well, you saw him looking up, knowing the wall was coming and trying to judge how bad the hit was going to be. The answer is bad it's enough to throw track, him into a big old skid. Well, next up, Joe Ciccini for Italy. Home is Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Well, he is Italy's sole representative in the World Cup at the moment. You may see the Italian-based Italians coming in later in the season, but after a 5.02 start, let's see if he can use his North American experience to good effect. This could put him in the top 10. He's a powerful starter, and he had a great showing in the America's Cups earlier this season. But the Italian program has just been struggling since after the 2006 Olympics. When you put all of your funding into the Olympics, oftentimes you see a struggle for years after. High line through Shady. Seventh at the start, 13th at the moment. Whoa! Wild, but not too Let much. Let it run. 16th place, 115-4, maybe not quite enough. This is going to be flirting with danger. And at the line, 19th place. You will be watching these next four very intently. 100th behind Barrett Martineau of Canada and two eight tenths, uh, eight hundredths rather, in front of John Farrell of Australia, who is currently on the bubble. Lee of Korea and Mirambel of Spain already are go homes. It's a great, I love that Lake Placid sign because it's a good indicator, even while you're in the track, of where you're at in Shady. And if they're above the riding, that's really high. That means you're not going to have any pressure on the end and fall out of the turn. Well, in auto racing, you see marks on every banked oval to give you that locator for exactly the same reason. Well, next up, Canada's Greg Rafter, another World Cup rookie, stepping up to the plate for the very first time at the elite level. Another Bromley Tech sled. Kristen Bromley, Shelley Rubman watching at home. Expecting another addition to join Ella in the Bromley family. Well, what's Rafter going to produce here? 23rd out of 26 starters. 528 getaway. He's already picked up one spot from the start. In this section of the field, it's not necessarily about seeing if someone's going to pop into the top 10. It is more about getting that second run. And he's having a tough time in Devil's Highway right now. Gotta think his way down this track. Feel the steers. Use the pressure. That's a good exit. Nice, neat, tiny little correction. His run is looking really good. You can see his experience here. It's just, it's slow. And like we talked about, if you're working too hard for those beautiful lines, it's only serving to slow you down. 114.7, 71 miles. Oh, not fast enough. He's not going to make the second heat. Hits the short wall, exiting the final corner. 56.10. Got it down, got it down safely. Didn't get it down quite fast enough to make the second heat, Greg Rafter. But what a great learning tool. I mean, the, the opportunity to come onto World Cup, sometimes that can be a bit daunting, but it's, it's I mean, really, to get the experience and really get used to the pressure at this level is important for a career when you're just looking four years ahead. Got to get in amongst the big dogs. Ooh, high on the end of 18 there. Wasn't the first, won't be the last. Touch clear the track. The track is now Great looking for helmet as well he's got. Now then, from Switzerland, Ronald Alderset, yet another rookie in the field. A possessor of a big, goofy grin as well. Nice kid, met him for the first time ever in the headshots a couple of days ago. Mickey Grunberger, the veteran Austrian, coaching this young Swiss slider. Mickey forgets more on a daily basis about sliding than I'll ever know. This is and a 
Look at the start again, 5-0-6. That's a top 10 start time. That shows a lot of promise for a program that's had three Olympic medalists and yet has not done anything since Gregor Staley. Well, you know, all coaches say, give me a starter and I'll make them a slider. If they can't start, they can't win. And it's very rare that you see the Marion T's sliders in the sports. That's someone that's got so much experience. She had a phenomenal ability to come back from behind. Well, where is he now? Tenth at the start. He's in 12th place. This is going to show a lot of promise for the Swiss program. That sound is his head dragging as he hits the G-force of the turn. A lot of pressure there in 19. Oh, no! Wow. Tenth at the start, and it just drifted away all the way down the track. Just miss, misses the cut by... No. In fact, that is repositioning him oh. now into 20th ahead of Lee of Korea and behind John Farrow because we've had a disqualification. Yun of oh. Korea, who was fourth, is no. DQ'd. So even as he was coming up the finish straight, he was promoted so from 21st to 20th. Reynolds downtown. That oh. is high drama. 55, We have to exit the booth Attention and go do some detective work. Now clear from Get the out there. <laughs> To start number one. Hey. So, start wow. For Pavel, Pavel Kulikov of Russia Russian. next up. Look at that smirk. <laughs> he is jacked up and ready to go. <laughs> now, <the> artificial stimulant <laughs> not required when you're doing 75 miles an hour with the melon Good. stuck out the front. You are the best. Four teams at the start, 5-10 for Kulikov, that's not bad. When you've got young athletes like this, Bree, they will get stronger, they will get faster as they get out of their teens and early 20s. And what I'm really curious to see is oftentimes you can't get that jacked up at the start because the whole point is once you're on the sled, you have to be able to relax. You have to be insanely aggressive for three seconds and then utter zen calm for the next minute. It's a great bipolar sport. Yeah, he's gone from 14th at the start to 10th place. Gonna nick the walls there, but that's good. 117.6 kilometers an hour. Ninth place, top 10 slide for wow. Kulikov. He's, this is Kristen Bromley's star. He set it up fast and wild, and he's riding a bucking Bronco to wow. seventh place on his debut. That is so rare that you see someone pop up from that far down the field, not just because typically the athletes maybe aren't as good down at the bottom, but they're just, when you start that far off of the fresh sprints, you're not getting the best ice. Wow. That is a great run. <laughs> All right. Next will be the final sled for run number one. Really Steve aggressive with back, this start. Team USA. We're going to see a lot of that goofy grin this year, aren't we? Based on this. Especially for a performance in like Placid on a track, the track he's track not spent much time on. To start number one. Start one for Steve. 26th and final starter in the first of our two heats here. Steven Garbett of the USA making his World Cup debut. Welcome, Steven. Here's someone known as the Silver Bullet, going to be looking to jump some spots and surprise people from that 26 start position. 523 getaway, in oh. which case he's going to need some silky driving. Oh no, he went way too late in a tune at that point. Your rhythm is offset. That very necessary speed maintenance at the top is lost. Don't forget, top 20 finish is required to go through into heat two. We've had one DQ, 24 sliders are down. He shows a lot of promise. He did great at the US team trials this year, and everyone is really excited for what he can do going in. Edging closer, he's in 20th place now. 118-1, good speed, can he hold it into the heart? This is where his knowledge should help him. Will he be in the field or out? Could be down to the hundredth of a second. And he's Whoa. not. Whoa. The 
warp zone. He found it in the heart. He found the vortex of speed in the heart, and he is not 20th, not 21st. He is 13th, 55-0-3. Hey, Stephen, welcome to the World Cup. Welcome to the show. That was great. Wow. That's a great run from the rookie. He's had a lot of runs in Lake Placid. This is a great start. This is his shot to do something, to come out blazing on the World Cup Tour. Going to be tough, though, going to other tracks if your start isn't there. And he gets good style marks as well. Well, Martin Stukos is our race leader, and the big story in the first heat is the disqualification of Sung Bin Young from fourth place. The Korean, we gather, left the start before his allotted time, before the bing bong and the green lights came on. Martin Stukos, too experienced for those mistakes, and he leads the field by one tenth of a second over Matt Antoine, the track holder. Who's going to win the second heat? Who's going to take the gold medal? It's likely to be between those two, but I'm not putting money on either. This is going to be a great finale to our World Cup season opener. Well, six of our sleds have been cut from the heat. Martin Stukos leaves the field. Brother Thomas lies third from Kyle Tress, USA second and fourth. Could be two medals for the Americans here with the following luck in a uh, following win. Anton Batuev in fifth ahead of Alex Jung. But the man who was fourth fastest will take no further part in proceedings. 20th place and first off, Joe Cicchini of Italy. And some great performances from our World Cup rookies. Sumin Jung of Korea, unfortunately DQ'd. And that means that his epic first heat we will have to make a new to note of and remember, because he's not going to chance to shoot for the medals in heat two. So that's it from the first of our two heats for men's skeleton. Stay with us for the decider. See who will come out on top with the first gold medal of the Wiesmann FIBT World Cup men's skeleton season.